Hey guys, we are back yet again out imaging with our telescope. It is freezing out here, I've got to say. Um, <laughs> but the things you do, you know? So we're actually on the horse head and flame nebulas right now. Uh, let me bring it over to the scope. Actually, this is what a, still, a single still looks like. This is 20 seconds exposure. And tracking's going pretty well and everything. I actually have uh, a bunch of things to compare for this one, so y'all can get a taste of the um, some of the different conditions. So I've shot the flame and horse head nebulas without the Astromod for my camera uh, in a reasonably dark spot with the Astromod for the camera, but using a CLS filter because I was shooting from um, the suburbs of Houston, and then this one now where it's optimal conditions and I've learned a little bit more so we'll have like the individual sub exposures for those to show you guys and then the stacked results too. All right so we have our comparison so in the top left is our dark skies without the camera mod our top right is our newest one which is dark skies with the camera mod bottom left is the from city lights with a city light suppression filter without the mod Bottom right is our from City Lights with City Light Suppression Filter with the camera mod. Um, now there's going to be differences in between a bunch of these. Um, I can't specifically really do a exact control. So there will be variations in that the exposure time varies a little bit. I have the details for each one in the top left of each. Uh, but in addition to that, there are some sort of like conditions based things so for example if we go over to our first image our top left um, the reason why the big star that's on the tack right there uh, the reason why that's sort of blown out a bit is because there was a little bit of fog um, this was also the oldest of the images but you have a, a good amount of detail in there there's uh, a good amount of color around everything but like the red especially around the horse head isn't super pronounced um, whereas if we continue on to our next images, so here's our, uh, we're going in chronological order, by the way. Um, this is our no mod with the, um, CLS filter and the sub is an hour and 30 minutes. So this one, the reason why this one might be a little bit more grainy is because it doesn't have as much time compared to the others. The other ones generally are, uh, a little more than two hours, maybe a maximum of like two and a half. But the, uh. One of the things that I find sort of difficult with using the CLS filters under city lights is recovering the colors. So the, the stars are not necessarily representative of the actual sort of blue that they are, that they were in the last image, for example. Though you can see the effects of the mod if we move to our next image right here. And uh, you can see that the, the red around the Horsehead Nebula is way more detailed and way more pronounced. All right, and here's our newest one. So I'm pretty happy with this. I gave it the, the special treatment where I, uh, I did the rotation every 15 minutes to correct for field rotation. So the, uh, the whole stack is pretty rectangular, generally speaking. Um, you can see the red and the horse head nebula is really pronounced. The orange and sort of the um, expanding outwards part of the flame nebula is really nice. Um, you have the diffraction spikes on on attack and everything. So one potential downside to the mod, and this really varies depending on the camera and the specific filter that you remove, is you might start letting in some infrared light. So with my camera, it wasn't designed for that. There was only two filters in there, and the filter that blocked hydrogen alpha also blocked a little bit of the infrared. So in this image here, you can see on Alnatac and the star to the top right a little bit, there are these halos, these circles on the around the stars a little bit. And that's what infrared, uh, infrared light will do to visible spectrum images. It creates that sort of halo. It's sort of similar to the effect that you have whenever you have a, a, uh, a refractor that doesn't bend the light uh, properly, uh, which is why multi-coatings and multi-element things are really important whenever you're talking about like Barlow lenses, for example. But I think it's pretty worth it. You get so much more detail in your nebula, especially, uh, though you're probably not going to be imaging a bunch of stars like that. Uh, you don't really get this issue with the planets, though, so it, it largely leaves planetary unaffected, which is pretty good. 
Uh, so, so that's sort of generally what's going on in that one. We actually have the individual 20 second subs for some of our images here. This is no mod dark skies portal four. Uh, and this sort of, um, illustrates the effectiveness of the mod again. So you basically can't see anything in this image. Uh, like the, that star right there is on the tack and everything. If you look at the other images, you can see it pretty well, but, uh, if you move over to the one with the mod, you can actually make out the flame nebula. And if you look really, really closely, you can see some of the red forming from the horse head nebula area. So even on these 20 second exposures, the, the mod is sort of allowing you to capture those wavelengths that are a little bit closer to uh, infrared for hydrogen alpha, especially. So that sort of uh, demonstrate the, uh, demonstrates why I personally recommend doing the mod. It's not super difficult to do. Um, some of the screws in some of these Canon cameras, I've done the mod twice now, some of the screws are in there really tight and I actually couldn't undo the screws just like with a normal screwdriver. So I had to get some pliers to give, you, uh, to give me some extra arm. You, uh, one of the most gratifying things about doing this as a hobby is you sort of see your improvement over time. And I hope to keep on showing y'all some of the improvements that I'm making each time. So stay tuned, guys. Thanks for watching.